No Rest for the Weekend's coverage of the Tribeca Film Festival is sponsored by Black Magic Design, the world's highest quality products for the feature film, post and broadcast industries. Blackmagicdesign.com 30 years ago, a person born into the bottom 25% of the country economically who studied hard and worked hard had about a 25% chance of rising to the top 25%. Today, only a 5% chance. This was supposed to be the land of opportunity. It's getting much harder in America to move from one class to a higher class. Why would these young people have any great affection for American capitalism? They watched American capitalism literally destroy the economy in 2008. They watched their parents go through literal hell. They've watched college become beyond expensive. They've watched the healthcare system become beyond expensive. They've looked at the job market. They've looked at wage growth. And like, what the shit is this producing for me? I'm here with David Smick, the director of America's Burning. David, uh, you've arrived at Tribeca. How does this feel, my friend? It feels fantastic. Uh, Tribeca has been terrific, and they've been a huge help and boost to our film. For those who haven't seen it or don't know about it, can you kind of uh, give me a little explanation of America's Burning? Well. I began sitting around thinking about the divide and the hatred that's separating us in this country and, uh, and talk of a civil war even. And I began to say, you know, what are the reasons for this? And the one reason I never heard was economic, the collapse of the middle class and the death of the American dream. And I said, Let's, I think I'm going to explore that in the film. It's probably been, I don't know, 20, 30 years ago now that uh, George Carlin said that they call it the American dream because you'd have to be asleep to believe it. Are things worse now or they've just always been bad and we're like more aware of it? Uh, George Carlin's in the film saying that, uh, that line. That's a, uh, I think things are much worse. One thing I like about the economics is the numbers. The numbers don't lie. When you look at the numbers, the American middle class has taken on the chin. I mean, there's a velvet, velvet rope society of brains and money that most of us are part of who are involved in this that have separated ourselves from the working class and the middle class. And, and that's, you can't have a democracy like that. You can't have a democracy where people feel isolated and forgotten. You've got a bunch of uh, big minds in this film. Talk about the subjects and how you were able to get them. Uh, my, my background is in finance. I've worked in the financial industry, and I just in the last five years have gotten into filmmaking as a second career. So I have a very strong Rolodex. A lot of it is trust. If you say, I want to inter you know, interview a former Secretary of State or Secretary of the Treasury, they have to trust you, and in this case, um, they do, that you're going to seek the truth but not... Uh, you know, not produce an interview that reflects just on you. So. We've seen some bits of the film. It doesn't seem like a lot of sunshine and rainbows, I gotta say. Is there is there hope to be had? Yeah, the film talks about, realistically, about the dangers that the country's facing, but a huge part of the film talks about America's brilliant and successful history of resilience. We've come back after a lot of stupidity and embarrassments. I mean, this is... This, this whole thing is an experiment, this American experiment, and we've made mistakes, but um, you know, we're unique in the world. We're unique in history. We've never seen anything like this, and so I'm an optimist. I think that, that if we come to terms with making sure that no one is left behind, I think we can, uh, we can survive as a democracy can survive. Does the film have any plans on how we're exactly supposed to do all that? Yeah. It's very easy to, to go and say, let's, uh, let's attack the capitalists. They're terrible and all the rest. And we're going we're gonna to run them out of town. Well, the capitalists have the money. They have the lobbyists. They're not going to do that. But what, you need, what we need to do is to build a movement that says to the capitalists, says to the money crowd, look, there's a, there are two words that describe a country where the middle class has uh, vanished and the ultra-rich sit side by side with the ultra-poor. And those two words, banana republic. Banana republics are not good places to do business. So I think you have to appeal to their, to their greed, to say, look, 
you've got to have a middle class, and it's got to be a strong and thriving middle class that believes that their kids, if they work hard, have the opportunity to do better than they do. That's the American dream, and that's what's missing now. If you want to know, as the film shows, if you want to know where a kid's going to be in 40 years financially, look at the wealth of the parents. And that used to not be that way. It used to have, you know, kids, their parents were plumbers, that's where I came from, and they, and they went off and became scientists and brain surgeons. And that, that whole American dream concept is faded. We've got to get it back. Another point that uh, people like James Carville make in the film, they talk about money in politics. How do you get money out of politics when the people making the laws benefit from money in politics? Yeah, it's, it's, that is the toughest problem. On the other hand, if we had a movement and people began to realize that the lobbyists are writing the laws, and there's, some, there's, there's a reason that we don't have as efficient and productive economy today as we had 30 and 40 years ago, is that Washington's run by corporate, ruthless corporate elites. And I, I think that once the country comes to terms with that and says to their congressmen and senators, look, don't brag to me that your presidential candidate just got a, a $10 million or $20 million contribution from a billionaire. That will come with strings. Tell me you got, you know, a zillion $40 contributions, and then I'll be, I'll be impressed. So we got to change the culture, and that's, that's, that's basically what Carville was talking about. I think it's really hard for anything to affect change right now, especially a movie. Do you guys have locked distribution? Do you feel like this will reach people? Do you think it will change things? Yeah, I think um, the distribution's going to come in theaters. It's not, I think if we go to a streaming service right now, they'll run it for a week, and they'll put it on you know, the pile with other documentaries, because documentaries aren't big money makers, and the streaming industry is, is under severe financial pressure. So I think right now for this film, what it needs to do is to get into theaters, into communities where it's talked about, and then go to the theatrical route. So we are, in July, the film goes to the Angelica Theater chains, and then it will expand beyond that. And for people who want to know more about the film, where can they find it online? Just go online, America, americasburning.com. And it's, uh, it is a, um, but this is, this is not just a film, it's a movement. And it's, you know, that, that people believe in. I, I, I can't tell you how many, a lot of famous people have come to me and said, you need me, I'll be public, I'll praise this project. You know, we got to bring back the middle class. It's, it's really a save the middle class movement that, that we're talking about. This is the BTRP Media Network.